Welcome to She Who Believes, the podcast. Well, it's time for our declaration, and it comes from Luke 1 and verse 45. This week, we'll be declaring it from the King James Version. We ask that you do two things, that when you get to the word she or woman, depending on which version you choose, you can choose whichever version you prefer, but this week, we're doing it from the King James Version. When you get to that word, replace that word with your name. Make this declaration personal, and then believe it. Those are the two things we ask. And even if you can't do those things yet, we'll still ask you to declare it with us because we know very soon as you declare the word of God, you're going to see it manifest in your life. So here we go. And blessed is Vivian that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told to her from the Lord. This week, I want to talk to you about the other side. Yep, the other side. There's another side to wherever you are at the moment. I know sometimes it feels like um, we can look at a situation and don't know how we're going to come out of it. Like we might start out living our best lives. Like for instance, like when we choose to give our lives to Christ. It's awesome. It's amazing. We're on fire. Life is great. It's wonderful. And then we start to run into some things, into some trouble, and maybe we're not as fired up as we used to be. And then it's like, hey, this was so great. Sometimes we ask, some people think, we question, maybe I should have stayed where I was, right? I'm here to tell you that if you hold on long enough, you're going to get to your other side. Whatever the other side of it is, whatever it is, I promise you, you'll get to the other side. You may be thinking, she doesn't know what I've been through. And maybe that word just applies to her. Well, whether we're talking about salvation, a divorce, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a business or a child or a ministry, it could mean the other side of a mental breakdown, anxiety, depression. You can even be talking about eviction, homelessness, whatever it is you're facing, there is another side to it because whatever it is you're dealing with, it's not bigger than God. I know you might be thinking sometimes, well, hey, all she talks about is believing God, but it's hard for me to believe God. Well, I need you to know you're not alone. I've been through many of these things I just named to you, and I've also been through situations and been in situations where I felt like I was going to lose my mind and I didn't know just how I was coming out, but I believed I believed in my spirit that God had more because he spoke certain words and promises to me as a young child. And I don't know, he just blessed me to be able to believe him. I I believe God protected my heart. He protected my mind. And I know that he'll do the same for you. There are numerous scriptures that tell us that God, that we have the mind of Christ, um, that, um, we are, we operate in a sound mind and not fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Um, there are so many scriptures that tell us those things. And I know that sometimes those scriptures kind of get a little sucky to you. And I know you're thinking that she said scriptures and sucky in the same uh, uh, sentence. I did because the reality is, is that some of you are feeling that way right now. Like I'm so convinced that this word is for so many people right now. Um, because just how God's been laying it on my heart and how he made sure that I just, um, came to a place where I was just raw and real with you all and let you know that, that God is for you that, and also let you know that I've been in your situation. Um, maybe not your particular situation, but I've been through a lot. I've seen so much, but I need you to understand that in the middle, when you feel like I can't see in front of me or behind me, that if you will just hold on, I promise you, you will get to the other side. I didn't know how I would come out of 
all of this or how my children would turn out. Even though I believed God and his promises for their lives, it was scary. Um, I was 27, divorced, newly divorced with two very young children. Um, my son was like three, three and a half at the time. Their father was in prison. And I have faced um, sickness. I have faced battling, um, watching my son go through all kinds of things, watching my daughter be attacked and spiritually. Um, I've gone through sickness of my own. I've gone through um, needing God to heal me because there was nothing doctors could do for me. They couldn't even figure out why I had the situation I had, but God healed me. I know what it's like to be afraid that your parent is going to die, to watch your grandparents get sick and ill. I've, I've seen so much, but more than those things, I've seen the hand of God move. And so whoever this is for, I need you to know that ending your life is not the answer. Giving up is not the answer. Quitting in the middle is not the answer because first of all, God has a purpose for your life and he is the creator and giver of all life. And even though things might seem hard and may actually be hard and devastating right now because I've seen some devastating things and like I said, I didn't know how. I would make it. I didn't know if I would mess my kids up so bad they'd have to have therapy for the rest of their lives or if they would even be able to be afforded certain opportunities. But what I did is I made a decision that every day I was going to get up. I was going to bless the name of the Lord and I was just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other because I had to just keep believing that there was another side. I want to say to the single mom who Um, doesn't know how you're going to make it, who you might be on food stamps. I've been there, who you may have been evicted several times, been there too. Um, You may have lost a job and don't know how you're going to pay your bills, been there too. But what I will tell you is that there is another side. What I will tell you that my lights were only turned off one time and that only lasts a couple hours. Um, Because after I realized that I had exhausted all of my possibilities, I did pick up the phone and make a phone call to my parents, which I never actually really do like as far as asking them to assist me. But I just said, hey, if you could um, figure out a way to assist me to pay my bill, I'll pay you back. Um, I would appreciate it. And I got off the phone with my mother and I'll never forget about an hour or so later, maybe a couple hours later, she called back and she said, they're going to turn your lights back on today. She said, when you called and I got off the phone and I told your dad what you said, your father said to me, whatever you have to do, do it. But if she called us to ask us to pay her or help her with her light bill, her lights are already off. I share that with you not to brag because um, there was no bragging in it. That was a hard time. That was a hard moment. My children were looking at me. I will never forget my son who could barely speak. Ran outside and told the man, turn my mama lights back on. (laughs) Um, And I can laugh at it now. It was a little bit embarrassing at the time. But he didn't know. He was my protector. He was his always thought he was the defender of mom. Um, But I went through those things and I share that with you with no shame today because at the end of the day, God kept us. Even through evictions, even through living in a shelter, even through going through all of the things we went through, God has kept us. And I'm telling you, there's another side because I declare that I'm standing in it right now. I declare that I'm seeing God perform every promise he's made. And there are some others that are still yet to be fulfilled, but I I don't doubt that they've already been fulfilled and that he set them in time for me to walk smack dab right into them. So I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to pray to him. I'm going to keep seeking him and let him lead me right into the abundant life that he has just that he created that he came and died for all of us to live and experience not just in heaven but on this earth so today again I just want to tell you whether you're on the other side of the beginning side of uh, salvation or divorce or um, anxiety or an abusive relationship or marriage if you're on the other side of being molested and raped and no one has believed you or you're afraid or ashamed I've been there unfortunately been there as well but I'm telling you I'm telling you that God there is another side for you I'm telling you this thing has been so strong in my spirit all day the other side there is another side and in the middle we have to just make a decision to keep believing and keep moving and accept and believe and what I'm believing so you're thinking what are you believing in the middle of this I am believing that God is with me I'm believing that God is for me 
I am believing that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am believing that God is not a man that he should lie. I am believing that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am believing the word of God when it says, when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. I am believing that the Lord has said that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. I am believing that all my children will be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace because it is the word of God. And I believe him and I have seen God move just strictly on my faith because it's his word and my faith in his word. Let me state that my faith in his word and I declare his word, believing it. That doesn't mean I'm declaring it and ain't nothing coming against me. Sometimes I declare the word of God. Sometimes I'm recording this podcast, battling oppression, battling the attacks of the enemy on my own mind, but knowing that even more the soul, even more, I need to speak this word and encourage others to believe in that the attack is really not even about me, but it's about you, the listeners, those who are listening now in 2021 and those who will be listening in 3031 when they somehow have saved all of these digital recordings and you are still listening to podcasts, which may at that time might not even be a podcast. They might be able to simulcast a vision of me. Um, while you listen, I don't know, but what I do know is this, is that God is real and that whether they'll do all those things in 3021 or, or not, God is already in 3021. Should it be in existence? God is always already there. He's in your situation right now. Dare to believe him, dare to call on him, dare to ask him to bless you, dare to ask him to keep your children and to open doors and to close doors for them. So as I record this podcast today, we are preparing to send my youngest son, my only birth son, off to college. And you might think, hey, that ain't a big deal. Like, I mean, you know, he's in this family. His mom's educated. His sister's gone to college. But you don't understand. My son has defied odds. My whole family, actually. My daughter as well has done things that people never thought they would do, not because they didn't see difficulties, not because the enemy didn't try everything he could to destroy my children. But what I need you guys to understand is that our faith, our belief in God, it is what changes things. You see, when I was 12, God and I had a conversation about my children. I've shared that with you. And you're thinking you had children at 12. No, I didn't. In the spirit, I did, but not in the physical. As their lives have gone on, God has made me promises for my children and showed me things and told me things and has even allowed me to write letters to their children. And I have, I'm have i just not able to tell them who's, who, whose child I'm writing to, what their child's name is going to be, or any of the specifics that God has spoken to me because that's just a part of the, the, the what, what he and I have, the, the, that's just what he's spoken to me. So I share that because I need you to understand That in spite of what you see that will come against your children, when God has um, showed you something or if you pray for your children and God has made you a promise for their lives, don't settle for what you see. Sometimes you have to shut your mouth and not say anything to them. I mean, all mothers are probably like, yeah, we know that. And some fathers as well. But sometimes it's not that easy. But when I tell you that if what you see, whether it is your children, your marriage, your ministry, your business, your family, whatever it is, whatever it is, if it don't look like what God said, then maybe that's not the end. And don't let how you feel and what you see change what you believe. Right here in the middle, just keep right on believing keep right on believing. Know that I'm praying for you. I look forward to meeting you back here next week and God bless. You are listening to the podcast, She Who Believes. Thank you for joining us today. May your faith be counted unto you as righteousness.